Good morning, bats and ghouls. Miss Mortis here again. Um, so day two of our fall Halloween trip. We are attending this morning the Merlin's breakfast at the Disneyland Hotel. Isn't that a gorgeous sight? I got to stay here once as a kid with my family and I got to stay here on my honeymoon. And hopefully someday I will be able to stay here again, but for now, we are going to go enjoy Merlin's breakfast, even though we are a little bit late, <laughs> as I usually run, but we'll check it out. Uh, 
uh, while it's often vilified. Uh, and uh, it's a shame, too, because, it, you know, that Walt's daughter, Diane Disney Miller, uh, created the Walt Disney Family Museum. Uh, that was one of the key things to, to tell the true story of her father and, and who Walt Disney really was. Uh, he was an amazing gentleman, uh, not a perfect man by, by any means, uh, none of us are. And uh, one of the things that was so amazing about Walt was he treated everybody the same. And I do mean everybody. You didn't have to be a big shot. You didn't have to be a studio boss or a vice president of a corporation. You could be a janitor, you could be a gardener. Walt Disney believed in treating every person uh, with the same respect and dignity they deserved. So I've never met a fairer man uh, in, in my life. And Claude, who was a longtime Disney employee, by the way, Claude was a black man. Claude was African American, so if anybody would have any complaints about Walt Disney, it would have been Claude. And, and this was the time of the Civil War, uh, right? Yeah. Started, yeah. yeah, and before the Civil Rights Movement, I mean, Claude was uh, working at Disney back in the 1950s, continued into the 60s and 70s until he eventually retired, but only had uh, good things to say about Walt Disney. And Claude was the kind of guy, he knew everything that was going on at the Disney studio, because being the studio janitor, he's everywhere all the time. And in, in a sense, if you're the janitor, people don't really see you, you know. <laughs> Even though you might be in a room, they don't really know you're there. So Claude would, he, he was filled with all kinds of information because he knew everything that was going on at the Walt Disney Studio. He knew what their plans were, he knew their business strategy, he knew what was coming up in Orlando, he knew all this stuff because he would hear all of these executives talking about it on a regular basis, but because Claude was the studio janitor, it was as though he wasn't there. So they made no attempt to cover what they were saying or speak softly or, you know, so they just, you know, but Claude knew everything. Matter of fact, he was, uh, he would tell me when major transitions were about to take place at the Disney studio. <laughs> he knew this before most of the vice presidents knew it. <laughs> He just, he was, just had access to all kinds of information. If he wanted to know anything that was going on at the studio, or at the parks, or anywhere in the whole Disney enterprise, talk to Claude, because he knew. And again, you only hear that story here. It's in no other book. It's been presented at no other convention. It's on no DVD something, <laughs> just here. But, but, but also, you said, Walt was not anti-Semitic. How can, how can you say that? I, I watched Family Guy. I watched Robot <laughs> Chicken. I know that he didn't like people who were of the Jewish persuasion. Well, if that was true, Walt had a lot of Jewish writers, artists, songwriters, musicians. Like who? Well, let's start with Robert and Richard Sherman, who wrote... They were Jewish? They were Jewish. <laughs> Uh, Mel Levin, who wrote the songs for 101 Dalmatians, he was Jewish. A number of animators like Ed Solomon and Lou Abbott and, and so many others were... Next you're going to be telling me Marty Scalar was Jewish. <laughs> One never knows. You just don't know. Now, do you have a favorite story about Soul in the Stone that you'd like uh, to share? Because I do have another question before we, we go get our pictures taken and meet uh, pretty here. Um, but again, with Soul of the Stone, maybe a memory that I don't know, or what one that's just come to you working on that film? Well, working on Sword of the Stone, as I often tell people, Walt loved to terrify his uh, subordinates. I think because it was almost expected of him. Uh, Milk was the dragon of D-Wing, and a lot of men feared him. And just to have Milk scowl at you would cause most men to shrink and you know, dissolve into a puddle on the studio floor. Well, this one, and, and Mill was fond of chewing out his artists if he felt they weren't doing their work properly. He loved to just chew guys out, poor Stan Green especially, and, and others. But one day he made the mistake of chewing out a young woman. <laughs> 
and I was there to witness this. Her name was Joan Drake, a very talented woman uh, animator at the studio. And this day, Milk thought he would tear into Joan. And so he went off into one of his usual tirades. I saw your work, and then and then, and then he goes off into this whole thing, and he's just yelling and screaming. And Joan looked at Milk and just started laughing. <laughs> laughed in his face, and you could see Milk just shrink. <laughs> no woman had ever laughed at him before. She just recognized that this was all bluster, like, I don't have time for this, you crazy old man. Go back in your office and get to work. <laughs> That's my favorite uh, sort of stuff. <laughs> story. that Freud is not just a Disney legend, he's a Disney treasure. Ooh. And then he just getting up this morning, just getting up this morning, very, but getting up this morning to come here to, to talk with us. And, and uh, you really don't realize what a treasure that is. Uh, uh, Lewis is over here. Lewis and I were in, in the, uh, uh, Lewis, stand up. But both the Mouse Club and the National Fantasy Fan Club always held conventions. And I got, as a young man, I was young once, uh, I got to hear Mark Davis speak, and Bill Evans, and Ward Kimball, and Ken Anderson. And I just thought, I didn't truly appreciate how wonderful that was to be able to hear these people share their own stories in their own words. And today, you are a living part of the Disney Anna Fan Club tradition of uniquely hearing stories that you need to share and pass on. Poor Bob Wilbon can't write down everything we said. <laughs> no way. No way. You'll be leaving out most of my jokes anywhere. I'm not going to read that issue, but that's all right. So what is going to happen now? You're going to be able to stand up because sometimes sitting down, you never ever want to get up. Floyd and I are going to go over there by the soul of the stone, and you can either get off photos together or separately, or have a stand aside so you can just take your own Gosh, no, I'm photos. Uh, for that, and again, that's another benefit for attending these type of events. But before we walk over there, I think you should get used to standing, and as you're standing, give a nice round of applause for a true Disney treasure. If you stand, please peek into the Disneyana Breakfast with Merlin's event that we did this morning. But for right now, until the Happy Haunts event this evening, we're here, back at Disneyland. We only have a few hours before we need to be back at the Disneyland Hotel for the Happy Haunts event. Oh my god, wait. the 
spice bundt cake and the chocolate mousse brownie over here from the Jolly Holiday. And we're gonna give it a try. Are you ready? Yeah. You ready? Are you ready? All right, let's see. We'll, we'll let them have the first piece. All right, because I love you guys, I'll, I'll let you have the first bite, so, so here we go. Mmm, yum, yum, yum. Just kidding. Delicious. Oh my god, look. There's like a cream cheese center. That makes all the difference. I was going to be like, that's going to be a pretty hard thing to finish all that. But that center makes all the difference. Mm. Now we are going to move on to the chocolate mousse brownie. Mm. Is that a little piece of gold on it? <laughs> that might be a little tiny piece of edible gold. Dang, Disney putting out all the stops. Okay. Edible gold. I'm gonna put it in my teeth. Here, we're gonna try it. Oh my god. It's like solid brownie in there. I'm not gonna be able to eat much of this. <laughs> super rich so you know like the hostess cupcakes it's like that but a lot more rich and a lot more dense definitely something you'd want to share so I think right now we're gonna go get on Thunder Mountain yeah chat with you soon